So, uh, welcome. This is a nice image, um, and I am joined here by my esteemed college, uh, college colleague, Dr. P.C. Ampolmans. Looking at this image, do um, you see something that strikes you? Well, we cannot see everything, but there seems to be something in the two to three o'clock mm -hmm. um, that needs investigation. And why is that? Because I think because the fold is deformed, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least there's something going on there. I mean, there's a lot of foam or whatever, and we're trying to make a point, right? You should clean it up, not like this. But is there? It's also something um, at the six, six seven. seven. Yeah. So it's a bit bulging into the lumen, mm. although you're insufflating. So. Mm, not, but this is a still image. But yeah, yeah. but maybe this is, of course, in the six o'clock orientation, thin person can be some can be vertebral column. So yeah. maybe we're a bit far down for that. In any event, both those things need interpretation. And the point we're trying to make is that actually you can see a lot without magnification, without anything, by just spending some time thinking. Okay, uh, we'll take off the pause. So indeed, we need to do some insufflating. And then we're going to try and clean up the situation. Now, you've got multiple options for this. This patient, thank you, is intubated. Um, so, okay, we're going to clean it up a bit. We're going to use um, some methicone. And we're going to have acetic acid prepared, hopefully, so we can demonstrate that as well. And then we're going to just suction that out. I didn't do too much pressure on that. I'm trying to avoid suctioning the mucosa so we are not ending up with a difficult interpretation. Now this scope is a, this is real life because this is not my most super duper endoscope ever. This is a uh, therapeutic endoscope from Fujifilm, EG 760CT. Uh, is this different now? To me it's definitely different. You yeah. see something, everything is rinsed off except for something white that you can see on the two to three the mm -hmm. clock. Mm. Um, which seems to be adherent to a nodular thing, protuberance. So there's something wrong, isn't there, yeah. in the two to three o'clock? Is that, I mean, can we can see Barrett's esophagus, I think it's fair to say. Yep. Uh, colonial lined epithelium of the esophagus. Mm -hmm. And is that a typical location for some problem in Barrett's esophagus for Defer you? Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. So it's in the right place. It looks suspect, so we have to be very suspicious about that. Yeah. And the six o'clock or seven o'clock, less so, I think. Less now. so, not as much anymore because the mucosal lining you see squamous to the Barrett's, there's no real difference in height, whereas mm. the other one you can see squamous and then it's bulging into the lumen. And on and a line, yeah. which is probably the spine. So. Yeah. Okay, so what would you like to do now? Well, First, like to have a, a view of the lesion, and mm -hmm. indeed, this definitely looks like um, a cancer. Yeah, uh, associated with the gastroesophageal junction or near mm -hmm. in Barrett's esophagus, although not super long segment Barrett's esophagus. No, pretty short. Why have you said it's a cancer? If a this type of nodular pattern in a um, Barrett is always suspicious, but then spontaneous bleeding. Um, yeah, spontaneous bleeding. You also said something already. Yeah, so an adherent, uh, I mean, adherent fibrin, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. So that's a, another good point. So spontaneous bleeding, definitely, it's a bit raised. It has a different, I think, even in white light, vascular pattern to the rest of the esophagus yep. and also to the surrounding Barrett's. Um, these are all clues, but, but let's just look a bit at that fibrin. So actually, um, a lot of people call this ulceration, right? So, so you'll get people that say that's ulcerated, that's for surgery. Do you agree? No, not necessarily. What would we need to do? I think to here, um, I mean, we need to be sure that it's local. So we need imaging. Yep. Um, that is one thing. Mm -hmm. We have that in this patient. We mm -hmm. did a PET CT scan. Um, last week, mm -hmm. and that didn't show any lymph node involvement nor metastatic disease. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some discussion on do you want to do EUS or not, because actually an excisional mm -hmm. um, staging is also a possibility here. Well, let's just, yeah, I agree. Let's stick on the this. So to get, if we wash this off, 
So we need a bit more power, I think. The water jet's now looking a little bit limp, if you permit my use of the word limp. <laughs> Can we increase the water jet, please? I mean, you want, you want, of course, the water jet not to be so powerful that it destroys the imaging, but usually, if, uh, you can wash this off, this surface fibre in here, yeah? and then you can, um, yeah, a bit more, I think. Please. You see? And so under this, especially if we then put it under, you can go more, um, Ruby, more, more uh, like that. Yeah. So, so you can see that it's come off, and then if we put the whole thing a little bit under, well, the patient's intubated, so we don't need to worry. And we don't have zoom on this scope, but I think that's still fine. Maybe we need to come off it to, to demonstrate it. You see that that was, is now bleeding, was mm -hmm. on an area, but, but is not ulceration, right? It is simply fibrin on the surface of a, of a certainly dysplastic high grade or maybe even cancerous uh, lesion. Okay. And then um, the final two things I want to point out are what, do you th what is this here? These patches of paler mucosa in the red. I would think this is a new squamous epithelium, probably where they biopsied before yeah, for surveillance yeah. of the... Brain. And so uh, you see that this was actually originally detected randomly, right? Yeah. Uh, probably was smaller than this, to yeah. be fair to them. Um, but it was detected because they've obviously taken a lot of biopsies in this patient, had a lot of biopsies in their time. Actually, does this patient fall in the, um, uh, the zone of... A lot yeah. of merits and not referral? A, not a, no, so I think it's, it's fair to the case to say that you can get this sort of thing in um, every type of virus. Yeah, every time. And, and it doesn't have to be long. It's just statistically more likely mm -hmm. the longer that it is. Uh, we need more water than that, mate. We are watered. We are being restricted today in Ghent with the level of water we have. Mm, yeah, it's still pretty bad, isn't it? Okay, so let's just finally do acetic acid, not because we want to um, really detect this lesion, but because we can demonstrate, I think, the parts of this which are very, very dysplastic and the parts which are not. Yep. Okay, so in this case, we have already got a spray catheter. I don't think you really need one for this. Mm -hmm. um, but, but if you do not have a magnifying endoscope, this is a very useful thing to do because all the things I cannot demonstrate that I want, I mean, it should, maybe should just quickly show BLI first. Yep. Um, so, so BLI here, it's, it's okay. Um, we get some sort of the structure, but the problem is uh, we cannot really get closer. And if we put water in here, we're too close. We don't really get any image because uh, we don't have magnification on this endoscope. So another way to delineate a bit more the margin of the thing you want to resect or that you, you at least want to characterize to see how much it is, is to put this. So uh, we just take a bit of gas out of the lumen. Let's go. So we go and I'll do the whole thing. Stop, please. Now we just suction the lumen close, so we get full coating of that. Now a little bit of uh, bubbling there to start with. If it's not a bleeding, the combination of this and BLI is fantastic, but I just expect that given the bleeding, we're going to have to use white light. So you immediately, this hasn't even, of course, this is the blood from before, mm -hmm. but within a few, yeah, 20 seconds or so, we should see loss of acetal whitening of the parts which are dysplastic. So we still need to wait a little bit more. Maybe Infocol is a good idea. Although, certainly you do risk washing off that. And what's already your feeling? Is your feeling that um, it's localized this thing or it's more spread out than we thought? You mean localized as in? To the position, in, yeah, not, not, um, not systemic or not, but in this area. Is it localized on the four o'clock or is it much more spread out than that? As far as I can see, it's from the in between, take two, a knife, and two, in between 2 and 3 and going up until the 7 o'clock, the bulgy. Mm, 6, 7, yeah. Yeah, six, yeah seven. but it's not like it's got flat extension by the look of it. And I think no. that's where the acetic acid is really very helpful. So yeah, yeah, yeah. To see um, that you don't have um, extension to the, yeah, because we are really 2 o'clock, right? More than that, I think not. Other thing is, final observation is, if you look at that fold, there's a fold coming up into this. Yep. What do you think about that? That's coming up until the GOJ. Yeah, I think that's... But on all other fold. folds that we see, gastric folds, mm -hmm. they stop. Yep. And this one continues into this lesion. Yep. Is that something which concerns you or something which you... Oh. This might make the resection more difficult, I would think. I mean, I'm only concerned with that is probably it's fibrosis mm -hmm. information is that 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 signifies uh, the presence of muscular involvement mm. I think that is very unlikely in this lesion from the endoscopic morphology that we see but of course we need to we need to check that all right uh, tip out please mm -hmm. 
So because we were paused on this image, we have damaged a little bit underneath, but I still think we can mark. And so just to finalize this video, we are talking about the extent of this. And I think probably the knife is now on the exact extent of it here. Yep. And so we would mark, of course, a bit more left than that. We would come around the top here um, and we would include all this part up to the top and along the bottom. Um, yeah. So there you go. I hope that was interesting. We're going to get on and remove this and we'll put a little um, marker of that at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.